Erin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We call to mind our sins as we ask the Lord for pardon and strength. My God, I am sorry for my sins. With all my heart, in choosing to do wrong, and failing to do good, I have sinned against you whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend, with your help, to do penance, to sin no more, to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, suffered and died for us. In his name, may God have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Prayer of St. Augustine to the Holy Spirit. Breathe into me, Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Move in me, Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Attract my heart, Holy Spirit, that I may love what is holy. Strengthen me, Holy Spirit, that I may defend all that is holy. Protect me, Holy Spirit, that I may always be holy. We now listen to the readings. First, the Responsorial Psalm and the Gospel. Today's Mass readings, followed by... Reflection and in silent adoration, and then we have the litany of the most precious blood after the silent adoration. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I have experienced more joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the Holy Ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have the full right in Christ, to order you to what is proper. I rather urge you out of love, being as I am, poor, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus. I urge you on behalf of my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become, in my imprisonment, who was once useless to you, but is now useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, 
so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. Beloved, especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has done you any injustice or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, write this in my own hands. I will pay. May I not tell you that you owe me your very self? Yes, brother. May I profit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. The word of the Lord. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who will bow down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. The fatherless and the widow, he sustains, but the way of the wicked, he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the vine, you are the branches of the Lord. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is. Oh, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will no longer see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there he is, or look, here he is. Do not go out. Do not run in pursuit. 
For just as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. If you remember the message of Jesus, I do not know how many times I said it here, but I said, I think quite some few times, that he has only one message. Having said that, I also said all the other stories in the Gospels, parables, whatever Jesus said and did, and indeed, are all in relation to his one message. And the message is, of course, the kingdom of God. or the reign of God. But when he said that, the kingdom, the reign of God is among you, he also said, because the first is, again, a declarative statement. Something is declared. The kingdom of God is at hand. That is declared. So that's a declarative statement. What follows that is a command. We call it imperative statement or a command statement. Therefore, believe and repent. Key or crucial, therefore, to our deeper and deeper appreciation in understanding or understanding and appreciation the kingdom of God is we believe faith and then we repent now this is crucial the imperative statement from Jesus crucial because the hearers, the listeners of his day, did not understand what he was talking about. Oppressed by the power, the empire, or the glory that was Rome in those days, in the times of Jesus, and for a long time, even before he came around, the Jews under the bondage of the rule or the reign of the empire that was Rome wanted, of course, liberation. So they are understanding up the kingdom of God or the kingship of Jesus or his reign was no doubt political, meaning that now the Messiah, the Messiah who is to come, would free them from the bondage, the ruler, the oppression that they suffered. That's why you see in the gospel they hated the, the tax collectors and all that, because, of course, the benefits of those would be not so much for them, but to the ruler. Having said that, Jesus was offering another meaning of the kingdom of God. What is it? 
Because after 2,000 years, since Jesus came, you ask, let us ask the people, do you, do you know what the kingdom of God is? It's a very important question. Why? Because that's the only message he gave. So we might ask, well, or it's better that we understand. Otherwise, we, we fail or we miss understanding the one and only message of Jesus. So what is it? What's the message of Jesus? I mean, what's the meaning of this? The kingdom of God is among you. That is the question. And I'm sure today, with all the catechism, with all the whatever evangelization and faith formation and homilies that we have listened to or heard and all that, we still have, I think, I feel, a very, very difficult understanding of what Jesus is talking about. And it is what? It is about suffering and perseverance. And I wonder why humanity will have a very hard understanding of the kingdom of God. Because it is related to suffering and perseverance consequent to or as a result of your struggle, my struggle, in your soul, in my soul, in each one's spirit between good and evil. Between what is truly right and what is authentically incorrect or false or fake. Between what is really true and what is good and righteous. And we know it today. After 2,000 years of hearing God's word, reflecting, or maybe not, not hearing God's word because we do not read and we do not pray and we do not meditate and we do not contemplate, maybe we're just missing it. The reign, the kingdom of God. Why? Look around into this world. There's so much confusion, right is wrong, wrong is right, isn't it? Ask the young, ask the not so young, ask the children, ask the parents. There's a lot of confusion. And yet there's so much gadgets in terms of technology, communication, everything. And then people are even more confused. Well, more than confusion, more than being confused, they are lost, isn't it? I was talking to a teacher about four weeks ago. And this teacher, of course, is teaching the children and the young. And I said, what's happening to the young? And this teacher answered, or I said, confused? And this teacher said, confused and lost. 
is because when Jesus says, take up your cross, take up your cross, that's a counter meaning to the meaning of this world. Why? You, we think, you, think, you think humanity would like to take up the cross? No way. Or they would say, no way, Jose. What cross? We would like convenience. We would like ease and pleasure and all these things. We would like picnic, not cross. Not suffering. Not perseverance. You notice in our, for those of you who are attending our faith formation, Eucharistic spirituality, that cross over there is always placed here. That's not accidental. That's an intended for a meaning. And at the beginning, we make the sign of the cross. And then we pray, we stand up, pledge of allegiance to the cross of Christ. And then throughout, and especially to the end, or at the end, we sing, lift high the cross. So, the cross is what? Or the suffering is what? Again, it's a consequence to and as a result of your struggle, your battle, a spiritual battle, la guerra espiritual, the hardest battle ever to be fought by anyone, for those who will engage in this battle. Battle between what? Again, between good and evil between right and wrong, between true and or false. For this, we need discernment of spirits. And in today's world, as the battle rages on, the question I think is, where am I in this war? Where is my faith? Does faith truly matter? And then, therefore, where is prayer in repentance, in conversion, or transformation of my life, consequent to the struggle between good and evil? And in and through the struggle between good and evil, what's the byproduct? With God's grace and blessing, hopefully you and I will become holy, will become a saint. Father, is there no other way? There is no other way. Where can I read that? That might be your own reflection, Father. Can I read that somewhere else? Yes. For those of you who have Laudati app, that's in today's Laudati, uh, as prepared by, uh, what do you call this? The Legion of Christ, Father. Those of you who are using, that's why I said it's not enough to listen to the Word of God proclaimed during Mass or listen to the homily now. You have to read it again. And then you have to read it again. And then you have to pray and meditate and pray and meditate and read it again. And so read the lecture, pray oracio, Meditate, meditatio, contemplatio, then what? Hopefully, with a spirit as light, I will act on the basis and the power of God's Word. 
Do you do that, Father? Yes, I do. I'm not contented with I can celebrate here every day. I'm not contented with the Word of God just being proclaimed. Of course, that is the heart of where the Word of God is to be proclaimed, the liturgy. But after that, I read the readings of the day. The first is from Surreal Psalm. And then the second reading, if it's a feast, otherwise it goes into the gospel. And then I go into the reflection. And then I look, what's, what are they talking about? What's, what's in the Laudati app or other sources? What are they saying? And then one deepens one's word. So what do we have today? Lord, help me to understand your kingdom better. Imagine after 2,000 years. Lord, help me to understand your kingdom. What's, what's this, your kingdom? You're a king soon, by the way. We will be celebrating the feast of Christ the King. As the Sunday before Advent. Anyway. What do we have here? The Pharisees were wrong in their notion of the kingdom of God. The expected kingdom was a worldly kingdom that would cast off foreign domination and restore sovereignty to Israel. But Christ's kingdom, so I'm reading now the Laudatia, the one prepared by the Legion of Christ. But Christ's kingdom is concerned more about the state of the soul and the struggle between good and evil than external nations and then people fighting for this power, for that power, and so on and so forth. Whatever the means, you know what's happening. The Pharisees' misconception kept them from recognizing Christ and his kingdom. Now, look at this sentence. Thousands of years later, we too can be susceptible to the errors of the Pharisees. Meaning, that's what I just said. 2,000 years after Jesus, we still do not know. Or we have a hard time understanding what this kingdom or reign of God is all about. Why? Because when Jesus says, you really want to come and follow me, take up, take up your cross. You say, what's that? Take up your cross? And when we have the cross or the crosses in our lives, what's the question? Father. If God is good, if God is love, why me? Why am I? Why do I have this cross or the crosses of the suffering? Isn't it? Are those not the questions? For us, a lack of faith can keep us from seeing that the kingdom of God comes only when we accept Jesus as king of our souls. And then only when we allow him to rule in order and order or regulate our lives, does the kingdom come? When is that? Cuando? When is that? Now. Not tomorrow. Why? How will we know tomorrow comes? We might be only up to tonight. Remember the gospel? You fool. In Jesus' story, of that, somebody was with plenty of harvest and making so many barns and all that, and now I'm going to uh, live my life, be happy and be merry and all that. 
for enemy tomorrow you will whatever so Jesus says you fool for tonight I will take your soul away from you so not tomorrow not yesterday that's gone now now is the moment for me to encounter Christ and make him my king The kingdom of God is real. And that's the only message of Jesus. The question is, what am I doing? And what am I missing?
litany of the most precious blood of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, hear us. God, the Father of heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Blood of Christ, only begotten Son of the Eternal Father. Blood of Christ, incarnate Word of God. Blood of Christ and the New and Eternal Testament. Blood of Christ falling upon the earth in the agony. Blood of Christ shed profusely in the scourging. Blood of Christ flowing forth in the crowning with thorns. Blood of Christ poured out on the cross. Blood of Christ, prize of our salvation. Blood of Christ, without which there is no forgiveness. Blood of Christ, Eucharistic drink and refreshment of souls. Blood of Christ, stream of mercy. Blood of Christ, victor over demons. Blood of Christ, courage of martyrs. Blood of Christ, strength of confessors. Blood of Christ, bringing forth virgins. Blood of Christ, help of those in peril. Blood of Christ, relief of the burdened. Blood of Christ, solace in sorrow. Blood of Christ, hope of the penitent. Blood of Christ, consolation of the dying. Blood of Christ, peace in tenderness of hearts. Blood of Christ, pledge of eternal life. Blood of Christ, freeing souls from purgatory. Blood of Christ, most worthy of all glory and honor. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. You have redeemed us, O Lord, in your blood. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have appointed your only begotten Son, the Redeemer of the world, and willed to be appeased by his blood. Grant, we beg of you, that we may worthily adore this prize of our salvation, and through its power be safeguarded from the evils of the present life, so that we may rejoice in its fruits forever in heaven. For the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Tanto mergo sacramentum venere mortir nui it antri cum documentum no voce da tritui praestit fides supplementum sensum defectui Genitori, genitorque, lauset iubilatiu, salus o norbertus quoque, sit in me, ne dixiu, procedenti, a vostro quei comparsit lauda si you. Amen. Amen. You have given them bread from heaven.
let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as a memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the vision you want for us in the peace of the kingdom. We will live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. 
Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is Hark, the Lord celestial hymn, angel choirs above a racing, cherubim and seraphim, in unceasing Fill the heavens with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Fill the heavens with sweet accord. Thank you so much for coming. We do this every Thursday evening, 6.45 to, or 5.45 to 6.45 in the evening. We also have adoration here in the morning, immediately following, immediately after Mass, every day. Usually up to 10 o'clock and even a little beyond with the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. For those who cannot make it to our weekly, we have daily. For those who cannot make it to daily, we have this weekly. So anyway, thank you for coming. Thank you to all of our, those who are watching us, live stream, and good evening, good night, God bless you all, and we continue as part of this gratitude to God. We continue our weekly, uh, every Wednesday, Eucharistic spirituality. Spirituality on the basis of the, of the Eucharist. The source and the summit of the Christian life, well, 6 to 7. So come, if you have time. Uh, we have the three season. This is a three season program during fall, during winter, and during spring. Springtime will be doing something. It will be in relation to the home as a school of faith. It's not so much learning, but it is basically doing. It's a long season. 
and hopefully we come out of this really understanding and appreciating what the Eucharist is all about on the basis of the magisterium and scripture and tradition. Very, very important because again we are taught, we are reminded by the church, the Eucharist is the source and the summit of the Christian life. Without the Eucharist, there is no church. And as Jesus says, this is my body and this is my blood. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood shall have life everlasting. Good evening, good night, God bless you all.